Gonna make a beacon. Gonna get all those lovely effects. Gonna make a beacon. Gonna get regen and strength and speed and all those other things. Oh, crud nuggets. Gonna block myself into the corner. Oh, I feel like a professional Minecrafter now. Oh well, good thing nobody else can see this. Be rather embarrassing otherwise. Oh no, not again. Greetings and bienvenue everybody, welcome back to Omega's Adventures in Minecraft! It's been a while, I know, and I do apologise for that. Um, real life, what can I say? It tends to laugh at your plans. Laugh at them, and then jump all over them in a merry mariachi. Or should that be hat dance? Either way! Lots of trumpets, lots of maraca. So, what's been happening? Well, things have changed on the server. I've been helping Leia with a bit of a project. Um, we've had the end dragon fight. Oops, that would be my phone. Um, I did record the end dragon fight, and then my computer decided to eat the footage. Perhaps a... Uh, 300 gig file was a tad excessive. We'll just not go there. Um, unfortunately, none of the footage was recoverable, but there's plenty of uh, video up there of it. Biffa's video is brilliant. We got to use tactical bedding. That's the first time I've ever used the phrase tactical bedding, and I hope to use it again. I quite like tactical bedding. I wonder if you get a higher rating for a bigger tog. That could be something we could check out. Anyway, so I guess you guys are wondering what we're doing here and where here is. This was part of Leia's present to Biffa. As a sort of thank you for all the videos and for his upcoming, well, he's now past it, so he is at over 100k subscribers, Leia work like a mad woman. In fact, I'd say she was madder than Mad Jack McMad, winner of the Madman contest five years running. And that's saying something. So yes, this is the nether entrance and as you can see it's quite a picturesque little field. It's very pretty. And for <laughs> She was going to go for a clean grass look and then Voidford got involved and it's a bit more natural looking but still very pretty. So I'm going to change into first person and bring back my toolbar and we'll get started on today's tasks. Oh, as you can see from my hot bar, just fought a wither and got another nether star. That may have made good videoing. I really am having a bit of an issue with what would be a good video and when to record. We'll try and work on that one. So here we go, back into first person and through the portals we go. You know, interdimensional travel is like good comedy, it's all in the timing. And welcome to our reigning Biffa Bowl. And this is the project that Leia and myself and Moogie and Voidford and Rash and Eno have all worked on for the last couple of weeks. Though Moogie has done heck of a lot of the digging and so has Leia and Leia did the majority of the building in here. 
and this is an almost completely faithful reproduction of Biffa's Bowl from Season 1 of Hermitcraft, with a few updates to make it 1.8 compliant, such as nice blue gra glass, um, the connected textures, some sea lanterns here and there, you know, making it look pretty. So before we go through to the end, I'll just up the, the water stream here and we can have a quick look at the bowl from a better advantage point. Leah got Void to recreate the house, um, the Kralis house that Kralis sort of pranked Biffa with. It's quite a nice little place, I think he should use this as his base home. It certainly gives a nice view of the bowl. So yeah, it's looking good. And over there is the rainbow that was also a prank, but again, it's the sort of thing that looks really good. Um, so again, it was recreated, and there's now a little message on there. And if I'm any good with the old pearls, we'll swim over and have a look. Bum, bum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Have a banana. Bum, bum, ba -dum, ba -dum. As you can see, I'm using ender pearls. We have an ender farm. Life is good. So this is the message. Now, originally Joe Hills had put a lot of hill speak on here, or hermit speak. But now, this is the message. As you can see, no Hillsian speak this time. Just a sincere thanks for your videos and the server. From Leazara, Moogle Ray, Rashkavar, Omega, Void Ford and Enophone, which is our sincere thanks to Biffa for all the work he's done getting the Patreon server up and running and creating a fabulous community. And look at the ocean around here, isn't this amazing? Good thing there was a stronghold under an ocean so we could recreate the bowl naturally, hey? <laughs> I kid you, I kid you like nobody's business. I'm going to bring up an information screen so you can actually see what biome this is. Oh, no, that's not an information screen. That's a screenshot. Ooh, I might use that as a thumbnail. So there, here we go. As you can see from the top left, this is dun, 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 a forest. Or it used to be a forest. As I say, a lot of digging and even a hand poured ocean. That's dedication for you. Real dedication. So there we go. So I'll just peril back over. Oh, that would have been so good if I'd landed right in the portal. So, here we go. Back down the steps. It's quite good. The animals sort of spawn in here and they all seem to work their way down to sort of stand guard round the bowl. It's quite freaky but also quite cool looking. Yes, I mean you cow, I mean you pig. Doop -doo. So Biff has actually started moving all in. He's moving the majority of his stuff over, so he now has a base on the server, not just his hobbit hole. He's even got Champ moved over. So that's good, because the last time I saw Champ, he was stuck in a wall. Not a comfortable place for a puppy. There we go. And this is the end portal. And through we go. Welcome to the end. Now, we've already started converting it. I've been responsible for the majority of the design around here for the structures. So this sort of vortex pattern was my idea and I've been building it up. Oh, piece of glass missing there, need to fill that in. Um, but yeah, Leia worked on the mechanics and helped get the end farm working. How you worked on the rail transport system and gave a bit of a hand getting some of the building work done. Um, but I built the sort of the pattern for the floor and the ceiling of the the end farm. Um, I also built the sort of the, the leading gazebo as well. But that's not the impressive part. Well, it is kind of impressive. What's also impressive, and if we end our peril over to give you a good view is the statue that Voidford made of our dragon battle. As you can see, it's us, well, it's the 
symbiotic, symbolic Minecrafter killing the dragon on a bed. Because obviously, the bed has to be memorialised. After all, tactical bedding. <laughs> Void's also built this sort of lovely little garden area around here. So the end is actually a really nice place to visit. I'm going to see if we can instigate a torching party or two. See if we can't torch up the whole island. That way we can get rid of the ender jerks. It is a bit nuts after all when they get out. But for the most part, everything that most people will be in is protected from them. Like this ceiling's two and a half blocks high so no ender jerk can get up here. So that's quite cool. As you can see there's the entryway down here. That was actually Robbie that carved that out. He was bored, as Robbie gets sometimes. Um, and he sort of carved out this step thing and I looked at it and I thought, that reminds me of a vortex pattern. And especially with the entry portal at the bottom, that looks so cool. So I thought black glass, purple, sea lanterns, very cool looking. Somebody's actually replaced um, the end stone with coal blocks and I think that looks incredible. So there's black glass over the coal and that just uh, makes the colours really ping. So it's really cool looking. As you can see as well, more, more ender pearls. Finally got a fast way to get around the place, not just um, the old, you know, shoe leather express. Right. Onto the actual farm. Hopefully this won't be too loud. So onto the minecart and off we go. Placement was incredible between the arrival place and the portal out. And then Leia managed to get the pillar back there really smack on centre. So this place all lines up and as you come out you can see my design for the spawning platform. Very cool. Sort of like a alien processor I think Leia called it. So it's an incredibly smart looking. And this is the main platform for the, the end farm. Ceiling here is slightly lower but because it's glass it still gives you that air, air look. And we left the walls open because the water curtain actually looks really incredible. And if you want a real pucker moment, and yes, my slip gatorisms have been increasing dramatically. Even to the point where we called the little endermite up in the top of the farm squirt. But that's just funny. Um, so yeah, real pucker moment here. Put it into third person and run for the wall. Running, running, running. Ha! Stop. <laughs> the glass extends over the nether brick fence here. So this raises you up half a block so it stops you going any further. There's a slight dip in the middle there where the um, connection isn't and you just sort of move slightly forward but it's still enough not for you to fall off. So ender jerks ahoy and you can kill them all day every day like so. As you can see I'm already up to level 60 or if you feel confident and let's just say you've been approved you can use TNT to kill them all in one go. From zero, one blast of about, well, the mob cap seems to be about 100, 110. So one TNT will get you from zero to level 20 in one go. And then do jumps of about seven levels after that because of the increasing XP range. But honestly, once you're up, you just keep going. A few little whacks like this, you get a few pearls get a few more levels, you just keep cycling up. So I put in the first enchanting station over here and everything you need is within arm's reach. So you stand here, got your enchanting station, ender chest, crafting table, even some anvils to keep you going and there's a few spare in the chest as well. Though I will hope that if anybody breaks them, they'll be responsible and replace them. After all, community farm, everybody needs to use it. <clears throat> Leia's husband, Tin, has been on uh, as well recently, which has been really cool. He's a really great guy. He loves Transformers as well, so we end up geeking out about Transformers so much. 
I think would drive everybody else insane. Leia, patience of a saint, puts up with us. In fact, she's kind of osmosis some of the geekism, and she's <laughs> she's even come out with a few good references herself. So go Leia. And but he made his first enchanting table. So I've set this side uh, number two, and that's Tin's going to make this station. So hopefully he should be on either tonight or tomorrow, maybe at the weekend, and you'll get that set up. So there's two enchanting stations at the back. This is going to be sort of the TNT center. So if we get a mob farm up and running, we'll keep a supply of TNT and lighters in here. As much as all you need to do to get rid of things um, is just sort of launch them out the side. Big open space or void. So, you know, not an issue. Um, I will get them to put an automatic hopper dropper uh, trap chest mechanism in for waste as well. That way it gives you a bit more control over what you throw away. Um, it's not the first time that somebody's misclicked and we've lost um, you know, enchanted weapons and such out the side. There we go. Um, so yeah, so that'll go in, that'll be a trap chest and that'll just sort of dispense anything that gets put into it. The reason this will be a trap chest is so that it won't actually just start getting rid of anything till you close it. Okay, so what I'm going to do today is add in the last sort of couple of things. Weird looking island, as an aside. It's almost like there's been three islands that spawned on top of each other. Honestly, Leigh and I were digging down to put the portal, uh, to put the pillar in so we could sort of come out and set up the end farm. Do love that ceiling over there, that platform. And we thought where we were in the middle of the island we'd gone the wrong way because it was just such thick end stone. But it did mean that we didn't have to worry too much about how far we had to come down. So yeah, I'm going to add in a couple of beacons on either side to give people regen and maybe speed and strength. So that people can, you know, quack away and regen without having to worry about eating. Which is a bit of a problem just now if you do that. You have to keep a watch on your health otherwise it runs down. So yeah, there we go. All good in the hood, as they say. I really, really should never speak street. It doesn't work for me. I'm not that cool. But there we go. So, I shall cut just now and I will be back once I've finished. See you soon. Hello and welcome back again. And I finished my little building. Had a minor mishap or two. But that's not too much of an issue. Uh, so yeah. Got it all done, and I think the end farm is nearing completion, which is great. Now, after the, it was quite good after the dragon fight, um, I'd already talked to Leia about starting to do the farm, or at least sort of plotting out where it was going to be built. We had the majority of the farm built within about two, two and a half hours of the dragon fight. Tweeted Biffa about it the next morning, and his response was, Don't you guys ever sleep? <laughs> Which, of course, got the reply, Sleep? What is this thing, sleep, you speak of? <laughs> I tweeted him a picture of it, and I got all I got back was, like, the surprised face. It was the, oh, my lord. <laughs> so that was quite cool. So anyway... Exterior, now done. Beacons in place and looking good. I went with, um, well, actually, I shall do the reveal and I'll show you what I went with. So, ba -ba -da -ba, the end farm. Yay! So, yeah, I went with purple for the beacons. Um, I think that works really well with the end. I had thought about red um, to go with the netherrack uh, fencing, but I think the purple was definitely the better idea. So each of the beacons is also covered in water, and as you can see from here, the water drops off. We are really, really low to zero. So yeah, <laughs> talk about pucker factor ten. <laughs> So when I built the beacons, I counted out um, 
from this platform, you know, the center stripe, and I went, okay, I want to go eight out on either side and then eight away from the farm front itself. Except I forgot, as you can see from that angle, there's a bit of a buffer. So if the train car ejects you over the side, it catches you and stops you falling into the void. Yeah, I forgot about that. So I did that side first. I went out eight, built the beacon, covered it in water. Then I came over, navigated around the delivery system for the ender perils to go up to the arrival platform. Went out eight, built the beacon, came back, came, turned around, looked at it, and the beacon behind me was out by two blocks. I couldn't believe it. It was like, no. Yeah. Talk about a facepalm moment. So I factored in the pucker again and went out and started to shift it. Hayugami came down to give me a hand and he was getting rid of some Enderman and he accidentally fell off the side. He put a bucket of water down to try and swim my back up again. Except there's not a lot of place for water to go to swim back up. So he kind of fell out the world. Sorry Hayu. But he's okay and he thankfully, because he knew he was working in the nev and in the end, I should say, um, he knew not to keep his good stuff on him. Um, so yeah, beacons in place, end farm, as good as finished. I'm just going to add in a few chests, because there's enough actual platform space and people keep throwing in chests anyway. I'll put in chests and then that way people can, you know, sort through and leave some stuff or get rid of stuff and it'll save them adding them in randomly about the place. If I do it, at least it's controlled. So there we go. The end farm, one of my current projects. And as I say, I'm very grateful for Leia and Hayu giving me a hand to get it up and running. I mean. I could have probably followed the tutorial to get the redstone mechanism in place and put the delivery line in, but really, Leia is just, she's the maestro of redstoning. So I'm glad she did that, and Hayu is great with doing the minecart stations. So again, got that done, got it out of the way. Happy bunny time. Happy bunny time. Oh, speaking of bunnies. I had a few visitors to Axelon. Oh, a few visitors indeed. And let's just say they left me and void a few little presents. Mm, which I think I'll go over and I'll show you now. After all, there's nothing like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. Oh, it's going to be one of those days. Hey guys, okay, heading back to Axelon, and I thought I would show you some progress on the hub designs. Now, um, been a while, so massive amount of changes from what's been seen previously. Um, Voidford won the competition for the hub design, so he's building the main nether hub, and I asked Iris, who came in second, if she would actually build her hub design at the Spawn Island, give it a nice look. So we've got the Spawn Island Nexus and the main nether hub, which is next to town, which I like to call the Lament configuration, which is from Hellraiser, uh, for a reference. The puzzle box, when it opens, is called the Lament configuration. And as we're in the hell biome, and well, the hub is passages to and from places, from hell, as it were. Uh, name kind of fits for me. Of course, after the number of people that have fallen off, and you'll see why in a second, it's kind of more the lemon configuration. But that actually works as well, so either name kind of works for me. But anyway, 
yes, onto the hub design. So yeah, you can see from behind me that the ranch portal has really changed, as has the rest of the place. So if you come down to the side of the ranch, uh, you get this nice spruce wood library effect. And over here, there's some nice um, spruce logs with some more bookcases, bit of nether rack, some stone. That way it takes you down to the gold farm, which is off to the east of the hub. And up here, and this is the east portal, which is quite cool. And this is the new nether hub. And as you can see, it's an incredible design. And also you can see why it's been nicknamed the lemming configuration. It's also why I put in safety railings. <laughs> Let's just say one or two people complained after they fell off a few times. So I had to put in some safety barriers. Void was planning on doing something similar, but I had to beat him to it. But yeah, it's an incredible design by Voidford. Really, really looking good. Oh, he's putting in a staircase now. So that will take us down to the, the nether floor. So that's cool. The dragon that you travel through on the rail car, amazing, amazing. We've got our station down there, and that takes you either up to the north towards the Wither Farm and the Blaze Farm. There will be a passage going south, hopefully, to link up. So the south tunnel takes you towards um, the Leviathan. Down the bottom there is the West Hub and that takes you towards Spawn Island and to Axelon and there's room for more expansion so it's an incredible design very well done and completely void for it which I love I just love how it just does not look like any other hub I've ever seen so kudos to void for it if you've not checked out his videos really should Incredible boulder. And my counterpart. What I like to say is my platonic life mate. And we do kind of complement each other. I have a flair for the overly dramatically large and Voidford has this incredible design aesthetic. Really, really incredible. So yeah, that's the main nether hub or the lament or lemming configuration. And down here to the west, we have the Spawn Island Nexus. Oh, pardon the jumpy jumpy button. Fastest way to get down here without taking a rail car. So yeah, so this is Iris's design and the Spawn Island configuration. Very, very cool. I think that's Voidford riding the rails, which go round the back of it, which is quite fun. So yeah, Spawn Island. Through there. Oh, we've also managed to get the Titan working, thanks to Leia beating um, Spigot into submission. Um, so there's a new game at the moment, uh, which I've invented, called You've Been Poppied. If you travel through the portal, you've got a chance of picking up quite a lot of poppies, which is quite a fun little game. So here we go, back to Axelon, and I'll actually show you guys some of those little presents I was talking about, which is quite fun. Ooh. Oh yeah, we had to put trapdoors in above the rail cart line. The pigmen kept on spawning or standing on the thing, and you'd be riding the rails and then suddenly bouncing back again. That was a bit of a pain in the backside. So yeah, new exhibits are Oinker of Justice and Hair of Wrath. <laughs> oh, here we go. So there's Axlon with my subtle branding. And over by the Colossus, we have many, many wonders. So obviously there's a really big thing to talk about, but we'll start off Moon, uh, Io Mooney, sorry, 
Io Moon, or Mooney as I like to call her, she gave the Colossus an Easter hat, which was a bit of a picky. We, well, Voidford got her back with Derpy Bunny, which was quite funny because it was a very derpy looking bunny. Looked like one of the ones from uh, Random Rabbits. I think it's Random Rabbits. Anyway, I have a thing for thinking the bunnies on Minecraft look adorable. So, Skywalker, I think possibly Io Moon and Moogie got together and they gave me a bunny and carrot. It's a very big rabbit problem we have around here. Moogie, um, <laughs> because she uh, loves Westies, we often talk about um, how I've had dogs, uh, Westies, and Collie, our current dog, has a habit of licking slugs. So, oh, let me just end her pearl over here. Oh, <laughs> this of course, oh, Void finished um, Fenris, uh, my wolf. So that's another Voidford statue there. If you look at the angle just right, it actually looks a bit like a dragon swooping towards you. But it's a smaller scale statue, so sometimes the detail gets a little bit lost when you're up close. But yeah. That's uh, Fenris, my wolf, howling towards Axlon, which is very cool. And there's my big Westie. <laughs> With slug. Whoops. There we go. So yeah, all set to have a quick lick at the slug. <laughs> but very, very adorable. She also gave me a really big heart as well. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so that's very cool of her. Uh, it's one of the reasons I've not taken away because I'm really touched by the gift. It's really quite nice of her. And over to our last thing. Oh, I built a breakdown station for sort of doing fortuning on oars. So there's a hopper system under these um, half slabs which empty out into these two chests. That way you can sort of pillar up and fortune down without worrying about losing stuff. Um, been making use of that myself. And this is Void's latest project. We were talking about having a dragon here. So, oh, Rash is off. I'll just say bye to him. Oh, he's already logged off. Oh, these fast loggers. But yeah. This is a spectral ghost dragon, which as you can see is made out of sea lanterns for the bone structure and then stained glass for the, the actual body. So it's very, very cool. Very, very big. Um, when we go back up to Axlon, I'll give you a proper aerial view of it. So one of the good things about Axlon is you get a really good view of things as they're going on. So yeah, this is um, underneath... Ah, lots of cobble. Um, underneath the dragon is going to be a sort of treasure cave or trophy room. So this is quite cool. This is definitely another Voidford Grotto. But yeah, it's quite cool. So it's got all the sort of ores dotted about the place. Um, Kind of Batman-ish inspired, um, you know, with the, how he's got his uh, mementos in the cave. Oh. Yeah. So that's Void already put in a display for one of the, th the things we've been given. So it's very cool. I like this idea of having a, a treasure cave or trophy room. There we go. So quick uh, munch on a bit of steak and we will head back up to Axlon and I'll give you a proper view of the dragon. This video is probably running a little bit longer than previous ones. In fact, I really do need to figure out a better way to time these things. Oh yeah, bunny cow's still here. Quite cool. Um, one of the cows escaped when Leia built our cow farm system. I'll show you this quickly. 
Yeah, so the cows are up there and you step on a pressure plate and it activates the uh, dispenser there and it forces the cows to jump up and you just sort of stand here and feed them with wheat. Admittedly, it's a good thing we don't have animal rights in uh, Minecraft because I'm sure this would contravene something. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah. Uh, the babies get washed down and then they grow up. So all you need to do is kill off the cows that are there, go up, do a quick feeding, and the babies drop down and grow up. It's a very efficient way and it means you're not having to count or keep track of how many babies you've bred so you don't overkill the adults. It also was an excuse for me to pay Leah diamonds for something so she could uh, get some more diamonds. <laughs> Um, yeah, because she was going through picks like nobody's business, digging out the bowl. So yeah, that's where Bunny Cow came from, and I'm sure they love their, their little friend. But they do seem to be pushing him about a little bit. Hmm. Aggressive bunnies. <laughs> so yeah. Very cool dragon. Very cool gifts. And we're back in the nether. And off we go again. And we're into Axlon. Oh, Moonrise. And, do, 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 do. and this is the farm side of things. I always get turned around when I first come up. So over here. And you can see the dragon. Which, as I say, very, very cool. even got fire in its eyes and its nostrils amazingly amazingly brilliant well done Voidford so well this is a bit where I fail at walking and talking again but here we go that's what I've been up to in Minecraft it's all been on the go and adventurous um, hopefully I'll get another video up soon. I might even get back to the other project, which I started, oh, seems like ages ago now. Still want to get that one finished. Oh, that's Mendy off as well. Um, I'll also show you, if it's still there, a little gift I left for uh, Shadow Lord. <laughs> We've been joking around because he's been sort of adorable like a puppy, so we just call him Puppy now. So you can probably guess what um, gifts we've been leaving for a <laughs> naughty office, I know. But anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will catch you anon. See you later.